no matter what time frame you trade. Wouldn't it be nice to have an indicator that told you when to buy a stock when it was bottoming and when to sell a stock because it was topping out? There is one indicator that does that exact thing and it's used by many of the top professional traders. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly what that indicator is and how you can use it in your trading. Now my goal is to make this video quick and easy for you because I have found the best indicators are those that are simple and clear to understand. You see, we want clear buy and sell signals when we're trading. And this indicator does exactly that. Now before I show you this indicator, let me first show you just how powerful this indicator is. Here you see a trade we did a couple weeks ago in MDT. We sold to open the July 21st $80 cash to put option and received 85 cents per share for that put option. Now what's interesting is that I had a patron ask me a legitimate question. He said, isn't that only a 10% annualized return? I thought that was a bit low for you. And he was right. We typically like to enter trades that pay us at least a 16, 17 plus percent annualized non-leverage return. And here you see my response to him that yes, the return was lower, but the goal is to be out of this position early. And we use the indicator I'm going to share with you in this video to exit this position for a very nice profit in a little over a week. Now fast forward just eight days later, and on June 20th, as you see here, we bought to close that put option, the MDT July 21st, $80 cash secure put options, for only 17 cents per share. So our net profit in this position ended up being 68 cents per share. When you analyze that return for the eight days we were in this position, it equates to a 38.7% annualized non-leverage return. So we're able to almost quadruple the return we would have got if we had stayed in this position through expiration, which was on July 21st. You see the indicator I'm going to share with you shows you not only when a stock has been sold off and sellers are not excited to sell the stock anymore, but it also shows you when buyers are getting exhausted or when a stock has overheated so that most likely will either level off or even come down in price. If you knew those two things, then you know when to buy a stock or sell cash you could put options against a stock. And then once the stock began to go up, you know when it was losing steam and when it was time to either close out your cash you could put option position or sell the stock if you own the stock outright. You see that information helps you know when is the best time to enter and exit your stock and option positions. Here we see the four charts I like to look at whenever I'm doing stock and option trades. Up top, we have the one minute, which we won't discuss that one. That one is primarily used for exact entry points throughout the day. But in the top right, we have the hourly, the bottom left, the daily, and the bottom right, the weekly. Let's focus here on the daily chart. Notice that our indicator told us on June 12th that we should enter a bullish trade in MDT. And for us, that meant selling some cash secure put options. And then about eight days later, on June 20th, it told us that MDT was topping out. So it's time to exit that cash secure put option position that we had entered just a little over a week earlier. Notice that since then, MDT has traded down just a little over 2% from where it was when we exited this position. Now let me show you one more trade we did using this exact indicator before I get to what that indicator is and how you can use it. Here we see a trade we did in INTC. Now previously we had sold the INTC January of 2024 $20 put option. Several months ago, we had entered a risk reversal position in INTC. Now simply what that involved was selling the January of 2024 put option and we used that cash to buy a January of 24 call option that was out of the money. Well since then INTC has taken off. So now that put option we sold that we used to pay for our call option is only worth 27 cents per share. So in order to take all of our risk off the table and close out the cash secure put option side of this risk reversal, we bought to close it out and we paid for that by selling to open the January of 2024 $50 call option for 70 cents. So you see we walked away with a credit of 43 cents per share and we're now in a spread in which we own the $40 strike call option that expires in January of 2024 and we sold the $50 call option and we're in this position totally for free. We've actually been paid to enter this position. And the sweet part about this position is that our risk is off the table because we no longer are short the $20 put option. And notice we did this on June 20th. Why do we do that on June 20th? Well, because our indicator told us that Intel was overheated, it was overextended, and it was most likely going to come down in price. And as you see here over the past five days, that's exactly what's happened. INTC has come down in price right around 12%. Now, just so you know, this indicator not only works on individual stocks, but it also works on the overall market or in indexes like the spider. About a week ago, using this same indicator, I told my patrons that we we're mostly going to top out in the market, experience some sort of decline, and that's exactly what's happened over the past week and a half. In fact, going back to the March of 2020 crash in which the S&P 500 dropped over 30%, by using this indicator, you would have been able to be out of the market for most of that move. In fact, you would have missed over two thirds of the down move by using this indicator. And then you also would have been back into the market a lot sooner 
sooner than most traders and investors were because they were basing their decisions on fear. You were basing yours on an indicator that has proven to work over time. The way I like to use this indicator is to view each one of these charts as a battlefield. And a simple analogy is to view each candlestick as movement of where the fighting is going on. I like to visualize one army's hometown as the top of the chart and the other army's hometown as the bottom of the chart. And each one of these armies is defending their hometown. They're defending their homes, their livestock, their livelihood, where they were raised. So as you can imagine, once the fight gets close to that army's hometown, they're going to fight more fiercely or they're gonna be more passionate in protecting their hometown. As the fighting gets farther away from their hometown and nears the other army's hometown at the top of the chart, well, that army will begin to get more passionate about their fighting and defending their hometown. The question is, how do you know when one army or in stock charts, how do you know when the buyers or the sellers are getting exhausted or running out of steam and are less passionate to buy or sell? Let me show you what this indicator is and how you can use it to buy or sell stock and options. Now, earlier I mentioned a trade to you that we did at MDT. We became bullish on MDT on June 12th where you see this green arrow and where my crosshairs are. Notice that recently MDT had declined almost 11%, but had seemed to be finding a bottom. The indicator I use to take a bullish position in MDT is volume and candlesticks. Notice down here in the volume section that while MDT was declining, and as it neared, we'll call this the buyer's hometown, or the bottom of this trading channel, the volume was declining. That told us that sellers were becoming less and less excited to sell. Well, what happened? Well, buyers became more and more excited to buy. Remember, these buyers are defending their hometown down here and fighting as close to their hometown. So they're very passionate about defending their hometown. And that's exactly what we see happening. The selling pressure had declined, so it was less than the 50 moving average as represented here by this white line. So the sellers had lost all their energy. They no longer had enough energy to push the battle farther. However, buyers became very passionate. And we see that because as buyers began to kick in on June 8th, if you look down here in our volume section, we see volume began to take off. So for the next week, buyers bought the stock up fiercely. And as a result, MDT went up in price a little over 9%. Now remember our indicator is volume and candlesticks. So notice here that on June 14th, buyers bought the stock way up, but sellers began to get excited and they sold the stock down. That's represented by this nice long leg on this candlestick. That meant that sellers were starting to get excited again when MDT reached this area right around $90 per share. Well, we stayed in this trade to see what would happen. The next day, the stock traded basically sideways. In fact, sellers tried to sell it down, but buyers came back in and bought it back up by the close of trading. However, the next day, we find MDT right back at that $90 area that remember, Two days before was an area where sellers became very excited and very passionate about selling the stock. And again, we see that $90 area was rejected. So the next day on June 20th, I decided to exit this position because it appeared that the sellers were beginning to get passionate about selling the stock again and buyers had run out of steam or run out of passion to defend their hometown. You see, they were a long way from their hometown, which is the bottom of this trading channel. But what happened? You see here that over the past three trading days, MDT has declined from around $89 per share down to $87 per share, or a little over 2% decline. And we were able to exit our position for a really nice profit and turn a potential 10% annualized profit into a 38% annualized profit. Let me share with you in a little more detail exactly how this indicator works so you can use it in your stock and option trading. The way I like to use this indicator is when I see that a stock has been declining, and especially if it's been a really nice big decline, like we see happened here with MDT before we entered our trade, what you wanna see is that as the stock is declining, you also want to see the volume declining. That means that sellers are less and less excited about selling the stock. Once the stock appears to have bottomed out, you then like to see buyers come in with some strength showing they're passionate about buying the stock. And we saw that. After MDT bottomed out, we saw buyers came in over the next week and a half and bought the stock up. They did it on pretty nice buying volume. And then when sellers began to take control again and sell the stock down for three days, notice that at that point, volume was a lot lower than it was back during its initial large decline. And when we began to see these legs forming these candlesticks, that showed that sellers came in and sold the stock down, but buyers were more passionate because by the end of the trading day, they had bought the stock back up. Those legs coupled with a decrease in volume as MDT declined, told us that it was a good time to enter a neutral or bullish position in this stock. Once we took this bullish position in MDT, we then began to look for signs 
that buyers were tiring and sellers were beginning to get more excited about selling the stock. Here we see that there was really nice buying volume. However, on the day we exit this position, the volume was a lot lower and it was actually a red candlestick day. Since NDT had rejected this $90 area twice, and since we would be able to pocket right at 80% of our potential profit in less than two weeks, I just had to go ahead and exit this position. So what are we looking for now? Now we're watching that as MDT has been coming down and approaching an area that should serve as support for around 85, we're watching for this volume or the gauge of excitement from sellers to start to diminish. Now it's not nearly as high as it was back when buyers were buying it up as can be represented by these strong green arrows that are well above the 50-day moving average. So we do see that buyers are still in control of this stock long term, but for the moment, sellers have taken control. But as it nears this area around $86 per share, I'll be looking for signs in volume and in the candlesticks that tell me it's time to take a bullish or neutral position in MDT. Although candlesticks and volume are two of my absolute favorite indicators, please keep in mind that no indicator works 100% of the time. But if understood and used properly, indicators like candlesticks and volume will put the odds of winning your trades definitely in your favor. Remember the job of an indicator is to improve the odds of you winning your trade or improve the probability that your trades will turn out. They don't guarantee success. And as always, respect the risk you're taking, understand your downside, and profits will follow. If you'd like to get an alert on we do trades, like the MDT trade I mentioned in this video that paid us an over 38% annualized non-leverage return, please check out the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. Volume and candlesticks are just two tools that I use to enter and exit positions. There are actually two more positions I like almost just as much as volume and candlesticks. These are very simple indicators that will improve the odds of you winning your stock and option trades. Like to see what those two indicators are? Check out the video below entitled, What are the best technical indicators for option trading? Until next time, happy investing.